Welcome. This is uh, Father Saul Digital Church, and uh, we are taking the last half an hour, last uh, 35 minutes, so to speak, roundabout of 2021. And we're going to just celebrate this time as we prepare our hearts and we get ready to cross over into 2022. What a what an awesome year, and what a what a difficult year in some ways 2021 has been. And uh, I think some people tonight will be ready to say, "I'm glad to see the back of that particular year." But there are other people that will say this was their best year ever. And God has been good and God has been faithful and God has been merciful. And they have celebrated and they thank God for everything that's been accomplished and done during 2021. But nevertheless, you know, for us, it's time to now reflect on, on 2021 and to thank God for everything that has been accomplished and done during this particular year. You know, when we come together like this at the end of the year and we pray the new year in, <clears throat> Excuse me, it's a, it's a sign that we are just putting God number one. We're giving Him first fruits of the new year. So the first couple of minutes, the first uh, however long, doesn't really matter. We honor God and we sow it and we give it into God. So when we prefer to pray in the new year and to dedicate and commit that year into God's hands, trusting Him for all the good stuff. So therefore, He receives the first fruits of the new year. I know that for many other people, they look at a crossover as being something that is uh, a new start, a new beginning. But I understand, the, I understand the, the, the thinking behind that. But it's very seldom a completely new start because it's really just an additional year that's been added to your life. And uh, to make it a new start, very, normally what needs to happen is that there has to be an event or there has to be a change, like either start a new job or or get married or have a child or do something, you know, but which is basically normally an event that happens that allows you to have then a, a new beginning or a new start. So lots of people look at the, the changeover from one calendar year to the next calendar year as a new beginning. And, and for me, it's never ever really been a new beginning per se. It's always just been a reflection on what has happened the year before. And I normally like getting to this time of the year where we sit back and we reflect on what's gone the year before. And normally I do an assessment and I look and see what, what was I hoping to achieve in this year? What was I trusting God for? And uh, has that happened? Has that materialized? Have we moved forward? For me, very often it's got to do, or most of the time it's got to do with the work that we are doing for God in, the, in His kingdom. So I very seldom look at my personal life, although those goals are in there as well. But it's made, for me, it's really looking at, the, at the, the work of the Lord and seeing, have we been able to take territory? Have we been able to take ground? Have we moved forward? Have we grown? Have we achieved the things that we feel God laid on our hearts maybe 12 months ago? And if so, then have we moved forward and have we accomplished absolutely everything that we intend to do? So that is normally what we do as a, as a crossover and as a, a time for that part of that is also then a time of thanksgiving and reflecting. So we come and we say, Lord, thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for protecting us, keeping our family together. Thank you for, for allowing us to be able to do the things that, that we have been able to do. Allow, thank you for allowing us to have grown and matured and developed into the things that you've wanted us to do. So, so we've been able to then take that time and reflect and, and say, Lord, Yes, it's been a successful year. Yes, it's been a year where we've taken territory and we've been able to move forward. At the same time, we also look and say, where could, where could we have done better? Where are there things that we could have done that would, be, would have allowed us to be maybe further in the things that the Lord wants us to do? And what adjustments do we need to make in our lives? We, we become very, not, not critical in the, in the bad sense of the word, but it's more critique, a review of what has actually happened in the ministry in our lives during the last 12 months and we use that then to develop for ourselves a growth path or way forward because we understand and know that the scriptures tell us that whatever our hand shall touch that should prosper we understand that we must be prosper and healthy even as our souls prosper we understand that there needs to be growth and development in absolutely everything that we do and because of that we expect things then to move forward. We do not expect things to stay dormant or constant or to go backwards or anything like that. But we expect to see the hand of God move. We expect to see things materialize and develop for us as we go forward. So therefore, for us, a crossover is not 
a, a new beginning. It's not a new start. It's not anything like that. But it's an assessment and looking and seeing what has been accomplished in the year before. And then basically start planning and working on things that are necessary as we go forward. So, a couple of comments and a couple of observations that I'd like that I'd like us to look at. So, it's very seldom then that when we come to a year end like this, that it's a, a restart or a new beginning. It's very seldom that that um, that we find that people change their lives completely during this particular. Uh, season. During this season, it's more a, a continuation of the same routine. Normally, we stay in the same jobs. We normally have a continuation of the same habits. But a new beginning is anything and everything that's got to do when we see a circumstance, an event, or a situation change in the person's life, like a death, like a marriage, like a birth, like a job change. That is when we start seeing that there are, are definite moments and opportunities of change in a life, and that could be a new beginning. Now, this is the comment I'll, I wanted to make at this point in time. We do not have to wait for a year change from 21 to 22, or whatever the case may be, for a, a new beginning in our lives. We as believers, we as Christians, we can, we can experience a, a new beginning any moment of any, at any time. It is normally a decision that we make and it's normally um, instigated and initiated by God himself that allows us to then enter into a new season and a new time. <coughs> I think one of the best examples would be if a couple gets married because that is a dramatic change in an individual's life. Because when two people come together, move into the same home and you're going to start living and, and building a house and there's going to be children, there's going to be family and there's going to be all these things happening. There are major adjustments and your life will never ever be the same again because of the change that you have invoked in your life by bringing another person close to you into your own home and to start living together and forming and building a new family. So when there's a new, a new start in the person's life, that can be at any moment in time, it can be at any season. There's, it's not limited to, to or not, doesn't normally get left to a calendar change or year change. It's also interesting to note that, that a, um, a new beginning happens daily because the sun comes up, it's a new day. Um, weekly, whenever we get to a Monday it's a new or Sunday, it's a new week. Um, a new month, calendar months change, there's 12 of them in a year. Every single time there's a change and we start the month over again. Uh, from a business and perspective or an organization's perspective, there's normally certain processes that then get repeated month on month. And that is what we have to understand when we come into or, or look at um, basically a crossover from day to day, month to month, week to week, or in this case, year to year. What makes it also very unique at the year end changeover, for, especially for us as believers, is that this is when we normally look around and celebrate Christ. This is when we come to the end of December. We have just celebrated Christmas a couple of days ago. And it's during that time that we celebrate our faith in God. We celebrate what He has accomplished in our lives. And then we also reassess and relook our Christian walk and where we stand with God. And as I mentioned earlier, that's when we use the opportunity to critique our lives, review our lives and see, especially for those that are in, in ministry, as to whether we have accomplished everything that we have purposed or we feel God has wanted for our, our lives at this moment in time. It is also at this point in time that we will reassess or assess the way forward and say, do we still continue on the path that we are on? Or do we make some adjustments? Do we go left? Do we go, go right? And when we do those assessments, they normally get done quite critically because we'll normally go for counsel um, if necessary. Uh, very often we will, the Bible says there's, a, there's wisdom in a multitude of counsel. So we'll go out and we'll discuss it with people that we relate with and that are, that are part of what we are doing or organizing. So therefore we look at this crossover then as, a, as an opportunity to, to reassess and to, and to look at stuff. It's also at this particular moment in time that we come to a point where we demonstrate our thankfulness to God. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18, um, Philippians 4 verse 6, 
All these scriptures indicate that we come before God with a thankful heart, with a grateful heart, and we, we, we come and show our appreciation and our love towards Him in, in what He has done and accomplished in our lives. Very on, often, there might be a, a process of honoring involved, um, etc., etc. So we sit down and we look then at what is basically going on. So tonight, even as you are watching this particular uh, broadcast, I want you to even look at your own lives right now and say it to yourselves, okay, fine, where are we? We are at a, at a, a crossover or a changeover from one year to another year. And it's most probably as good opportunity as any to, to look at, your, at the person's lives and individual, um, how we performed and how we've done. And therefore, even tonight, maybe as we work out the last couple of minutes of 2021 and we're about to celebrate and move into 2022 and we, we, we consecrate and dedicate that year to God, we will walk in, our, in, in the knowledge that He has provided us with and the stuff that He has given us. So the first thing we do then is we come and we demonstrate thankfulness. Now normally, in, in a, I know it's, it's, it's strange right now because even to me, normally at this time, we, will, we would be uh, um, coming together in a church building or something like that. And uh, we will be spending a lot of time in praise and worship right now, just lifting up our, our, our worship to our Father and to our King and then to use the opportunity to express our thankfulness to Him. And we'll normally do that in the form and the shape of a, of a worship service. For us right now, it's, it's obviously not that easy. Uh, we are still confined by certain protocols and certain laws that are in place at the moment. And therefore, uh, the pandemic and COVID has really disrupted the way that we would normally worship and the, norm and the way we would normally express ourselves. So in this particular instance, then, we are... We would come together and we would say, Lord, we worship you. We give you all the honor and praise for what, we have, what you have accomplished in our lives for the last um, 12, year, 12 months. Sorry, As we've come together and we've gone through that year and we've done mighty exploits and mighty things for God. And we would celebrate the victories and we would obviously consider the, the defeats and, and look through that and see what needs to be adjusted and what needs to be changed in our lives. At the same time. We also look and we see <clears throat> what we count our blessings and we worship him for his protection, his covering, his favor, the favor of God, which passes all understanding, his grace that abounds to us as we go over into the new year. So I want you even tonight to use this opportunity to actually consider what you would uh, or consider evaluating your life and thank him for those victories. Thank him for keeping you safe. Thank Him for bringing you through the times and through the situations, through the circumstances, through the difficulties, through everything that 21 threw in your face. I know for some people they might have been lost uh, loved ones that have gone on to be with Jesus. I know there are, there are people that might have found themselves being retrenched. There might be people that have lost their jobs because of the limitations that, that, that the pandemic has put on business etc etc so i know that there's a lot of difficulties that people might have gone through at this particular or this 2021 so therefore the things that they are thankful for they really have to have to think about it and and come to a place where they make a decision to be thankful for what god has done for them but this now creates an opportunity for us to start releasing our faith and to put our faith into play so that we can come to a place where we can rejoice in God for everything that we're trusting Him for for 2022. Because He is a faithful God, and I'll come to that shortly. He is a faithful God, and he, we can trust Him and believe Him and put our faith out there that, that everything that went wrong in 21 can work together for our benefit so that 2022 can see the hand of God move and we can do and enter into the exploits that God has purposed and planned for us. We do not have to fall short in absolutely anything that we do. Now, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 is, a, is a, one of my favorite scriptures, and it, it reads as follows. Let me just read it to you. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, Be anxious. Let me, let me start a little, two verses earlier in verse 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say, Rejoice. Now, this is Paul speaking to the Philippian church, and he's making a very clear 
command. It's not even a request. It's not even a suggestion. It is a very clear command. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say rejoice. So we need to count it all joy when diverse temptations and trials and tribulations come against us. And that is how James puts it. So we need to understand then that when we face trials, when we face difficulties, when we come into uh, or if we have to deal with the two years that we've just dealt with, 2020, 2021, it has not been easy years. And it's not been years where very few people can go and say, these years have been phenomenal years. And I've, I've, I've grown and I've expanded and God has used me. There are people that have done that, obviously, but not as many as we normally would expect to see. A lot of people have gone through these two years and they have, they most probably wouldn't mind seeing the back of 21 and enter into 22 and start releasing their faith for God's favor and for God's uh, blessing upon, upon the new year. Having said that, then they, Paul encourages the Philippians to rejoice and to count it all joy. Then in verse 5, it says, Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Now, we know that the Lord has been at hand for a while, but He's at hand much more now than He has ever been before. All right, And the time is coming close. For him to return. But in verse 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, I want you to take note here in verse 6. It says, Be anxious for nothing. Just read that and park it. And then it says, But in everything. Everything includes a crossover service as we start preparing our hearts and minds for the new year. So that's included in the everything. So in everything. <clears throat> by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So what we have done as a family every single year, and even as a church and as a ministry, is that when we come to this particular moment in time, that particular um, verse or scripture is what we apply. And we come to a place where we say, Lord, in everything, we thank you. We thank you for everything you've accomplished. We're counting it all joy. We are, we are making a decision to rejoice because we mere, the mere fact that we've made it, that we're here and that we are breathing already is a victory in its, on its own. And there are challenges and things that we faced over the year that could have taken us out and, and, and discounted us and, and nullified us and taken us out of the race. But it didn't. Your grace was sufficient for us for the season so whatever our circumstances whatever our situation may be whatever we're experiencing whatever we have or don't have that is irrelevant the fact of the matter is that we are here we have made it and god you have been faithful so for that reason we thank you and we come before you and we celebrate you and we worship you and we magnify you and we exalt you and we thank you for absolutely everything that you've done for us. So therefore, we come before God with that heart and with that attitude. But then we come and we stand before God. And that is what we're going to do <coughs> Excuse me, this evening. As we rush up, the time is running out fast now. We've got like, it's 10 minutes, 12 minutes before midnight. And we are starting to rush up to those, those last moments for this particular year, 21, going into 22. So we then come in with our prayers and with our supplications. And we let our requests be made known to God. So that we can enter this year with a heart and a mind of peace. Now, what I would suggest and recommend to, to most people is that when you stand at this moment in time and you are reflecting and you are starting to praise, uh, believe God and you are starting to, to prepare your heart for 2022, is to actually run, write down the main points. Because part of the assessment that we do is to look and see what we were wanting to achieve, where we wanted to go and what we wanted to uh, uh, get to during the season. And because of that, we have set our hearts and we prepared our hearts and we start writing down our supplications and our praise and those things that we are trusting Him for. So, <coughs> so we do that in this particular season as we start preparing our hearts for this time. So then we, the next thing is we bring to God our petitions and our supplications. We seek to rejoice in Him. We thank Him for everything that He's done. We thank Him for everything that He's accomplished. And then we start making the adjustments 
for the things that we are going to believe God. Because in other words, we acknowledge God as number one in our lives. We acknowledge Him as being the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We acknowledge Him as El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough, the all-sufficient one. We see Him as Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We see Him as Jehovah Rapha. We see Him as Jehovah Shalom. We see Him as all the and everything that He is at this particular moment in time so that we can get our hearts into a place where we can start worshiping Him and, 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 and basically making Him Lord of 2022. So I want to use this opportunity then. We're about 10, 12 minutes out. So as we prepare our hearts and get our hearts ready right now, I want you to start getting ready. We're going to pray. Again, we're going to pray this new year in and we're going to make uh, prayer declarations and we're going to start speaking God's word over 2022 and you're going to join in with me and we're going to celebrate as we go into 2022 1st of january difficult <laughs> quite amazing to actually even contemplate that we are right there right now so we're going to do everything that philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 says we need to do and for me one of the most important things at this particular moment in time is to sit down and your circumstance your situation is different to mine it's not this not the same but nevertheless, we both at that point right now where we're going to start looking at what we want and expect out of 2022. Your prayer tonight might be, you might say, Lord, we, we, we had a vision and a drive at the beginning of 21. But this year, it seems like everything has went shipwrecked. And that we are standing at a place right now that we're actually worse off than we were at 2021 start. But Lord, we're trusting you tonight that you are going to, with 2022, we're going to start restoring and seeing the hand of God move. And that you're going to multiply your blessing upon us because we are your children. And because of that, we're expecting that 2022 will deliver absolutely everything that it was supposed to deliver. And during 2022, we're going to play catch up. And you're going to restore us into that position that we needed to be already by now. But right now, we're falling short because of circumstances because of situation and we are restore we are believing you for a restoration so that might be one group of people's prayer tonight you're going to pray in that direction you're going to trust god and you're going to say you're going to decree restoration upon your life upon your family upon your businesses upon everything round about you then there are others here tonight that you might be in a place where where you your your family has gone shipwrecked your, you might have been you might be facing a divorce right now there might be healing that needs to take place in the relationships between siblings between uh, family members etc etc and your prayer will go in line with that so you'll come to a place where you'll you'll pray and you'll start trusting God you'll decree unity restoration oneness wholeness between all family members that God will reunite you as one and bring the unity back that was there and restore peace upon every single individual involved in the family. That even tonight, there'll come restoration, there'll come unity, and there'll come, <coughs> excuse me, there'll come oneness. And you'll pray in that direction. Then we've got other people here tonight that you're going to be saying to me, Les, we have, we've had the year like you will not believe. We've had a year of success. God's hand is just uh, touched us we've been blessed god has just made um inroads and we have been been extremely successful because of the favor of god and you're going to come and you're going to pray and you're going to say lord we believe you for multiplication we trust you lord that you'll use us as instruments of change as we go into this year of 2022 father god you're going to increase our capacity that we are able Father, to bless even more people, help even more people, restore even more people. And that you're going to use us to be able to, to be good stewards of that which you've placed into our hands. So that we might be the vehicle that you've planned and purposed for us. And that, Lord, you'll give us supernatural ideas, input, uh, creativity that will go beyond that of a natural man. That we will be able to see opportunities, unlock doors, and be able to go forward into the things that, that are set before us. That will be another group of people that will be there. And so every person that's here tonight that is watching, that's listening, 
that is ready to, to, to come through and to face 2021. Look at, uh, sorry, 2022. Look at 2021 and say, Father, I thank you that whatever happened in 2021, you're going to use it. You're going to multiply it to my benefit in Jesus' name. And Father God, whether it was good, whether it was bad, it is going to add to me. It has got no choice but to add to me. And you're going to increase your faith and you're going to bring your faith to a level where you're going to start trusting God now for the impossible. And you're going to lift your eyes beyond the limitations. You're going to look at what possibly could happen. Your hope is going to project out there past anything and everything that you've seen up until this, play, this point in time. So I want you to start looking at, your, at, at the way forward. I want you to take a pen and paper. Uh, as thoughts come to your mind, start jotting them down and start believing God for the 2022 that will, that will outshine absolutely everything and anything that's gone before because of the favor of God that is on your life and because you are a child of the Almighty God. And because you are the king's, a child of the Almighty King, we will go forward and we'll go forward into everything that God has set before us for this particular season. So we're going to pray for wisdom. We're going to pray for understanding. We're going to pray for sharp ears to hear the voice of God. We're going to commit to be obedient to the instruction of the Lord as we go into, into 2022 right now. So we are about three or four minutes out and so I'm going to start praying and I want you to join in with me and I'll, we're going to pray this year in and we're going to stand on God's word and we're going to declare and decree his faithfulness and we're going to do this because we acknowledge God as number one in our lives. We acknowledge him as the king of kings and we want to honor him with the first fruits of this year and the time is what we're giving to the Lord right now. We're sowing time into spending time with him communicating with Him, sharing with Him, and expressing our hearts. So let's pray together. Father, we come to You right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, 2021 is just about at the end. Father, we're coming into 2022. And Father God, we're coming in with a bang. We're coming in, Father God, with hearts that are on fire. We're coming in with faith that is rising up to higher levels, Father God. We've heard your word, Father. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We stand on your word. We thank you, Lord, that this this land that's been given unto us, Father God, you said, wherever our feet shall tread, that is our, our portion, our inheritance. And we step into that destiny and into that purpose tonight. Father God, I thank you that every single promise, every single word, every single thing that has been declared and spoken, Spoken over our lives, Father God. Lord, that you have decreed and declared will manifest the way that you've purposed for this particular season and for this particular time, Lord. Father, we do not pull back or restrain ourselves, but Lord, we covenant with you right now to be obedient to your word. Father God, not to withdraw, not to stand back and not to be in the, in the, in the shadows in the background, but Lord, to be engaged and to be active and to grab your word and to trust you for the impossible, Father God. Lord, because you are the God of the impossible. And Father God, you can do exceedingly abundantly far above whatever we can ever dream, ask, or think. And Father God, therefore, we do not even want to go by the limitations of our minds and what we can think. But Lord, we surrender and submit everything to you in your hands as we go into 2022, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Father God. We will not fall short in any which way. But Father God, we will accomplish absolutely everything that you have purposed for this particular season. 2022, you will deliver absolutely everything that God has ordained for this time and for this season. We will not fall short in whichever way. We will have sharp minds. We will have accurate ears. We will be, we'll hear the voice of the Lord accurately and properly. We will have the wisdom of God in us as we respond to every single thing that comes for, to us from the Spirit of the Lord. We thank you that the Spirit inside of us will rise up strong and become even stronger than it has ever been before. Father God, as we stand before you tonight, we thank you Lord, that 2022 will deliver absolutely everything for this particular season and for this particular time. Devil, we serve notice on you that your hands need to be taken off. Your hands will be taken off. Every single thing, every single resource, every single thing that is needed to be able to accomplish and do the things that need to be done for God at this particular time. Father God, I thank you right now that we will have perfect health. I thank you, Lord, that you will restore our health. We are healed from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Father, why? Because this, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. And Father, therefore, we partake 
of that right and of that privilege in our lives. Lord, I thank you right now that even as we are praying this very moment, Father God, that you are already commissioning your ministering spirits to go ahead of us and to make ways where there are no ways to straighten crooked paths. Father God, to bring us into places that we can move into the fullness of that which is destined a purpose before us. Lord, I thank you right now that even in our lives, in our families, I thank you, Father God, there will be protection. I thank you the devil will not rob or kill or steal from our families, but we'll have life and life more abundantly. And because of that, Father God, we'll experience your favor, the the, the, the amazing, most amazing favor that God, that that is possible in our lives. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we will even uh, uh, be able to harvest where we didn't sow. We will actually be able to take where we didn't even give. And Father God, because of your blessing that's poured out upon us, I thank you, Lord, that we are a blessed people. I thank you, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he adds no sorrow. I thank you, Lord, that we can walk in the confidence and the knowledge of who you are and what you've done and what you've accomplished. So we speak to 2022. We say to obstacles, to mountains, to be cast into the see to be removed and we trust God that it will come to pass we thank you that every word that we speak and declare will be words of encouragement words of upliftment words that will build that will uh, uh, create we will not speak destructive words or words that will break down or bring to naught but father God we will shape and form absolutely everything before us by the word that is inspired by God father we thank you also that we will be obedient to every single instruction that comes from heaven above and Father God, that we'll be quick to listen, quick to respond, quick to do that which, which you've uh, instructed us to do. And Father God, we thank you that we can go forward now with confidence, with boldness, with understanding, Father. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that even as your word comes, your word will come with power. It will come with might, Lord. I thank you within us, Lord, you raise up zeal, a passion, a desire to see the things of God accomplished and done. So, Lord, tonight, even as we come into 2022, we give you the first fruits of this year. We give you the first fruits of our time, Lord. We choose to come and dedicate and consecrate and put it at your feet. Father God, we do not want to neglect and we do not neglect the gathering together of the saints. And Father, now we speak into the heavenlies. We command this COVID-19 pandemic to come to an end, to cease. We command the, the virus to to die and to cease operation in Jesus' name. Father God, we speak for the nation of South Africa because this is where we find ourselves tonight. We thank you, Father God, that you will bring wisdom into our government. Lord, that the government will govern wisely. Lord, that corruption will come to an end. Father God, that peace will be restored to our land. Father God, I thank you that every prophetic word that's been declared and spoken over our nation will come to fruition. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, the identity of our nation is being changed. I thank you, Father God, even as we go forward. Father, that we'll, we, we are the instigator of revivals in the, in the continents of the world, Father God, in multiple nations. I thank you, Lord, that your word will come forward and it will be, happen as it's been declared and as it's been spoken. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we'll see the hand of God move. I thank you, Father God, that we, we are the breadbasket of Africa. We are the breadbasket of the world. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you will restore the wealth of this particular nation. I thank you, Lord, that the gateway cities will be protected. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that the very word of God will start flying from this nation into the continents of the world as we start seeing evangelists released and going forward and doing the things that need to be done. I thank you, Lord, that yes, we are an example. People will come to us and they will learn. They will study. They will come to know how to go out and to do the things that need to be done to be able to see the kingdom of God established and even roll out further and quicker than what it has been up until this moment in time. So, Father God, we give you grace. We give you love. We give you adoration. We give you every single thing that's within us, Father God. We empty ourselves out before you in these early in these um, first minutes of 2022 father god we thank you that 2022 will deliver absolutely everything that you've purposed and you've planned for this season father we will not receive or take any more losses in jesus name we will not be stolen from any further in jesus name we will not find ourselves shortchanged any further in jesus name but father god we will move forward in confidence and in boldness before you so father we thank you right now for your angels that are encamped round about us. I thank you, Father God, for your ministering spirits that are working all over our nation. I thank you, Father, that you are bringing restoration, healing, unity, Father God, amongst the people. I thank you, Lord, there's a one-mindedness, 
to go out and to see the purposes of God established. Can one nation be born again in one day? Yes, Lord, it can. We come into agreement with that and we speak it into existence right now. And we thank you, Father God, that this nation will fulfill the call that God has placed upon it. And Father God, we will be an instrument in your hands in these last days to do the works that need to be done and to accomplish the things that need to be said before us. So Lord, we celebrate you. We glorify you. We uplift you, Lord, for what you have done and for what you have accomplished in Jesus' name. Carry on speaking the word of God into 2021. Happy New Year, by the way. For all those that are watching and are there, we are in 2022. I haven't got any final letters here, crackers or Guy Fox stuff, So, but we're celebrating it in Jesus' name. We're celebrating 2022. It is going to be an amazing year. It is going to be a prosperous year. It's going to be a year of peace and tranquility in the hearts of the lives of the people of, that are of God. We're going to transcend into the fullness of what He's purposed and planned. I'm speaking life over this nation right now. And I'm trusting God for a mighty move of His hand. You know what? There's so many words that have been spoken. Dr. Arthur has been using the, the uh, communion services in the morning to, to talk about the prophetic voice and the prophetic impact upon our nation and what has been spoken. And we, we need to just start standing on God's word. <coughs> and not only just believe it, for the nation, but believe that it comes to being in your life, that you're, you are part of it, that it happens and manifests in your life. I believe that, that God's people are going to move forward in leaps and bounds and be able to have the dominion, have the authority, have the rule that God has intended purpose all the time. There is, there is coming a clarity in the lives of believers as they go forward as far as purpose and function is concerned. To be effective and efficient in the things that need to be done. So I want to encourage you. Allow that word to work inside of you. As you start embracing absolutely everything that God is speaking. And declaring. And you are bringing it into your life. And you say Lord include me. Let me be part of what's happening in these last days. And Father God that we will not stand by idly. And just and just be there. And just, just do what you know. Just what we normally don't have done up until this point in time. No, say to the Lord, Lord, let me be absolutely everything that you've purposed and planned for me. Let God activate you. Let him start changing you from the inside out. Let you become a, a, a fulfiller of destinies. Live your life out to the full. See the hand of God move in your life. Let the stuff that you do be, be successful. Let the stuff that you do be impactful. Let it change the lives of the people around about you. You know, we have to see this final revival. The revival that Rajol spoke about, where it speaks about the, the former and the latter rain, that the latter rain has to be greater than the former rain, and that there's going to be dreams and visions and all these things. There has to come a supernatural move of God where we start seeing the outpouring of His Spirit like we've never, ever done before. Why can't it be 2022? Where we can see the whole coming of that. 2020 and 2021 was, were two years that we saw tumultuous tumultuous times where where people lost a lot and the obstacles and the things that they had to face were in many cases really difficult stuff and not easy to overcome the devil has to restore and we as believers can stand up and we can be accounted for we can say lord it's our day right now 2022 is going to be a year that we're going to start seeing the outpouring of God's Spirit in ways that you never dreamt possible. So, as you now in 2022, we have we have arrived. The new year is here, and we are carrying on, and we're going to see God move. So, watch the presses, guys. Watch and see what our Father is going to accomplish in these last days, and you can be part of it. And God wants you, you and I, to be part of it, and He is making a way so as the saint africans go to the field you know get in there start pressing in and start seeing the hand of god move so guys 2022 is here go celebrate have an awesome time we i'm sure you'll see dr frost tomorrow morning gate for communion and 22 is 2022 is on its way may the lord richly bless you